Nobody likes an uninspiring work environment. The shop's super inspiring, but the guy's office is really sad. So what I'm gonna do is upgrade my videographer Joe's desk to something absolutely ridiculous. We're gonna pack this thing full of features that he wants. We're gonna light it up with a bunch of LEDs and hopefully by the end of it, we're gonna try some new stuff that I've never done here before. Let's go. All righty, bud, it's your time to shine. What do you want in this sucker? We need more space. We need to get rid of the clutter first off. Definitely need some integrated power. I'm constantly plugging stuff in. It needs some good lighting, something to really bring it to life. Cool, and then what color are you thinking? You want some epoxy in there? Blue epoxy would be sweet. Blue's my favorite color. Hell yeah. So. I think before we go any deeper, let's pick a size, and then let's also make sure that we've got some material here that you like, because I don't think you know anything about wood species. Nothing at all. Perfect. <laughs> Show them what you're working with, Joe. This is my desk. It's nothing crazy. Lengthwise, it's pretty good. It's a little narrow. I find myself like really close to the screen. That's probably my first gripe. It's not very sturdy, you can tell. There's so much on the desk, I try my best to keep it not cluttered. We have two speakers. We have a new iMac studio that, that we're sporting. Just for what we're doing, it's just next level. We have our NAS for all of our storage. That takes up a good bit of space. It's a brick, it stays here. So just some more space depth-wise, I think. And then the finish gets really dirty very fast. It could definitely be better. All right, Joe, so I recently grabbed up some Buckeye Burl on Facebook, and this stuff is awesome, and I want to build your desk out of it. I know you have no clue what that means, though, but what do you think about this? I think it looks sweet. I like it. Hold on. Hold on. Hold up. This is what it kind of will look like. All that character. Oh, yeah. Right? With some epoxy, that's beautiful. My thought is, this piece is going to need, oh, it's all Burl, so it's like really, holy oh, shit. Yeah. Holy shit's right. The slabs are only so big, but a couple of them, it kind of needs some TLC. So like this is busted. Put some pieces in there. They get some blue epoxy kind of going through those. I think that'd be pretty cool. What do you think? He likes it. All right, Buckeye Burl and blue. That's our two starting points. Now I'm gonna get some photos of these and start designing. All right, so we booted Joe out of the room and Chris and I are gonna kind of put our heads together real quick to come up with a general concept. So for me, I immediately went to where I think you're gonna go, which is IR Custom. So if you guys are not familiar, IR Custom is a custom builder. If you've not been on the internet for the last eight years, they do some unbelievable renderings and like metal and wood concepts with powder coated bright colors, LEDs, super cool stuff. I mean, Chris and I have been eyeballing their, their stuff for years. Do some like burl sort of thing here with like the river with some epoxy in there, but like, he has the NAS, he has the unit there, so we could even do uh, maybe a keyboard, something for the keyboard that like slides out down here. Do like an undermounted LED, like not an embedded LED, but an undermounted LED in here, so that like it shines up into the epoxy, but um, do a two layer epoxy. Blue is the base layer. Yeah, and then a clear deep. That way we can get all the burled edges and stuff that, that I just kind of picked out on that. I think that'd be pretty rad. For no clutter, we've got to do some sort of storage. Yeah some framing or something. Go kind of crazy with it. Potentially even do like a powder coat or, or a paint. Joe's more of a powder coat. He's gonna want it to look finished. Yeah, you're probably right. So like, let's start with this like 60 inch by 30 inch, 60, 26 by six foot or whatever dimension. We both kind of throw something together or I'll, I'll throw some of my ideas out there. You could do the same and we'll kind of see what we can come up with and then surprise him with it. <clears throat> All right. There she is, dude. What? <laughs> what the? That's crazy. Right? In the drawers? Are these backlit too a little bit? Yeah, there's lighting inside the cubbies. What? So you have cubbies above and then drawers below on each side. You've got a pull-out keyboard tray that in the is middle nuts. there. So another option too was to mimic the the back kind of the, these panels here that we're gonna make. Yeah. And then we'll put the same panel across the back. No, I think this is the The utility of the usage of this design isn't quite figured out yet, but like the look of it, what do you think? I like it, I love the look. Sick. I, I love the blue. Get her, you don't, I, I just love how it's like a one of one desk. Okay. It is a one of one desk. That's what I mean. For sure. I love the, I love For that. For sure. Sick. Especially with that wood, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> holy shit. So, uh, I, Got to build a form, and I want to get into the drying phase. So that's what we're going to do. 
We've got this chunky cutoff from another piece that's more or less just nasty rot. That's pretty darn cool. It's your table, Joe. What do you think? You like that so far? Yes, I do like that. I like the uh, like floating pieces. I think that's like super cool. Yeah, like this. This like, like the multi. It's almost like a multi room. This like rotten ass piece over here. God, this one's pretty. This is pretty awesome. That is our cut, Joseph. I'm bent over a slab of God only knows what kind of disease ridden wood, puffing and puffing it in. Breaker blue again. And you know, Joe, this just means we got to get that other big ass bandsaw built. That one's It's pretty rad. That's a lot of really good looking barrel. My mind's going to like coral reefs. It does have corally reefy vibes. Like, I don't know how this is going to hold up to being cleaned. It's pretty gross. I'm not quite set on what I want to do with these pieces yet, but I think I have the right pieces. All right, clowns. So this wood is just like shit. I want to touch it up real quick with the random orbit, throw on my respirator so I don't die of influenza or whatever the hell that fungus is. Clean a lot of these up and then we'll get into the edges where we're going to get squirrely and shoot stuff at it. Ask questions later. Cue the B-roll. These things are filthy. So I'm gonna get to cleaning them up. I got a bunch of tools here. We're gonna clean up these edges. Probably gonna bust out the soda blaster because that's gonna do a way better job on this. We're about to make a mess, people. It's soda, sand, walnut blasting time. We've got some medium here. I'm gonna fill that sucker up and I'm gonna shoot this some bitch to clean up these edges because ain't nobody got time to hand sand all this stuff. Let us spray? Spray walnut? <laughs> And guys, do not forget, when you are working with stuff that's this gorgeous and this dangerous, protect your eyes and look awesome doing it. Shop Shades, we just launched them. They're amazing. Check them out. It's our brand new line of safety eyewear. They're the most comfortable glasses you'll ever wear in a shop. I promise. Check them out. Got a link down below. These suckers are cleaned. They're debrised. I'm still filthy, so I'm gonna blow myself off. Now let's seal these edges so we don't get any damn bubbles. What do you think about that wood, Joe? Guys like me stay up dreaming about wood like this. I know that's not your thing, but yeah, I think that's some damn gorgeous looking wood. Old Samuel here is gonna hop in, give me a hand. Wow. Top down, let gravity be my friend. So remember it was dark and then I cleaned it, and then it cleaned, lightened it up, and then it gets back to dark once it gets the, the finish on it. But that's some cool looking stuff, huh? That is unreal. The black silvery stuff on the sap wood there is so pretty. Yeah, it's so cool. Chris is gonna nut. Chris had to take the day off because he had a hang now. See, this is the stuff. When Pula said he wanted to work for the premier YouTuber in the woodworking space, and then Cam and Brad weren't hiring, he knew he'd come here and just do some weird shit like this. Wood sex. Oh, God. Hey, this is my best pal. I'm not gonna lie, I'm sick of asking you guys to subscribe. Or am I? <laughs> what are we gonna do with a million, Johnny? Want... So here's what I'm thinking. A million subs, I'm gonna give away an entire workshop. Say what? I've been teasing you guys about it. So the faster we get there, the faster you guys can potentially win a workshop for me. And then I'll personally show up at your house and give it to you. So subscribe, please. We wanna give someone a workshop. We wanna go hang out, drink some beers, drink some bourbon. Sam can tell you stories from Vietnam. He's that old, if you didn't know. Eat Constantina wire and piss napalm back in Nam. Um, All right. But y'all don't say that. Had to go there. All right. And Sam, Sam can't just like giggle. Got to make a very inappropriate, divisive comment about a movie. Anyway, subscribe. Dude, look at how good this wood looks. Oh my God. But you want to see more good looking wood like this? You need to subscribe. Holy shit. This is going to be the coolest looking thing we've ever done. Easy. Bar none. I am so pumped to get these into the mold. You want it this way? Here's the other option. They're both pretty cool. This kind of, almost. Yeah. This kind, it's up to you. You're the, you're the expert. <laughs> it's up to me. It is your desk though. Cool. They're placed. Now we need to give Joe some options here to pick what epoxy he wants to go with it. I have an idea, but he might have a different one. So uh, let's go and get some samples. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's what you want? Um, yeah. All right, we're going with this. This blue pigment here, this is System 3's, it's the Cast FX Dry Metallic Kalama. So we're gonna mix a base layer with the uh, Total Boat High Performance Resin, pour that about eighth to a quarter inch. It's gonna take a little bit more, but we, we've got plenty. And then a normal pour, that will harden overnight, and then we can actually pretty quickly tomorrow, after 24 hours, pour the clear top layer to show all of the burl off still. So pretty excited. Let's mix. We're just gonna do this by eye. Start with that.
in bubbles in it. That's what they always say. Oh, with me, bubbles. All right, kids. So we get uh, bitched out a lot because you guys don't like that I don't degas anything. So we're gonna degas it. We got this big old chamber here. Let's pull some of that air out. What do you say? What do you say? F you, Bubbles. Bubbles, freak off. Now my concern is I whipped the living shit out of it, putting the color in there, and it's gonna get in there and flash in like four minutes. <laughs> Bubble free, bitches. <laughs> Let's effing go. I vacuumed this out for like the 38th time. Now it's time to send it. Nothing else to do except to do it. All right, so this actually is looking damn good. We are about to make a bold move here and I'm gonna use some deep pour black forest resin to pour the rest of it so we can see all of this burl. Kicker, the guys up at Black Forest sent this over a little bit longer ago than normal. Hopefully there's nothing wrong with it and it's still nice and clear. We'll see when we get it into the buckets though. So I got some clear buckets, we got the degassing. This is gonna take a minute, but I'm pumped because this looks really good. Joe, what do you think? I like it. Joe likes it and that's all that matters. So let's get into it. So I just mixed up all nine gallons of the resin. Now I'm putting them in this degassing chamber. This thing's pretty bad. Look at this, all those bubbles, it's pulling them out. When I do a clear pour, even though this is a, you know, 100% the correct epoxy mixed properly and done properly, I still like to pull the gas out. That way I'm super safe on bubbles. I'm just gonna be sitting here for like an hour, maybe an hour and a half degassing this stuff. We just snagged this thing up. We might have to call her Barney because she's purple, but it's worth his weight in gold so far with any of the degassing we've been doing. And now I just get to sit on a bucket and stare at it for hours. Nature of the beast. One hour later. Check this out. Look how crystal clear this resin is. Golly, that's getting me fired up now. Check this out, this is super satisfying. Are you ready? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So that's more or less all it takes. And we're ready to pour, baby. I'm gonna pour it right here and I'm gonna try to hit this little corner that way as it goes and flows. It doesn't create any more bubbles because you can see those bubbles start to show up. And we're still nice and level, but pouring it on the wood does allow for less bubbles to pop up. Oh yeah, look, it's sweet. That looks so good. See how that burl just stays gorgeous? It's going over the table now. Nice job, John. How's that for math? It's it's just cusping the surface. Let me get some of these voids filled. So good. So while the table is drying, we're gonna break down these 20 foot long pieces of metal. The base itself, if you remember from the rendering, is a lot of metal. And I need to get started welding on that stuff so we can make sure that all the wooden parts fit the frame. We usually don't do as much metal on projects and then we're able to fit the metal to the wood, but in this instance, we just gotta be tight with the, the metal first before we can do any of the wood stuff. And then that'll give us a lot more time for finishing um, the metal properly so it looks good. If the video sounds different right now, it's because I broke my lab mic hustling my butt off last week. We're getting a new one, no worries, but bear with us. But like I have to move the chop saw over to this stuff because it won't fit back where I have it set up usually. So we are gonna have to work on the floor. I can't use the bandsaw. I feel like old John here. Chris is out with another hangnail. Sam's got a, he's got the sneezes, but he's not here. Just me, myself, the dude behind the camera. <laughs> Who's getting the desk built for him? Uh, it's like back in the day. All right, this is getting way too complex, way too many parts, way too many angles. I wanna get to welding. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build the back frame. That's gonna be the part that's going in the back of the desk. And then I'm gonna start building stuff off of it. As you can see here, there's a lot of parts and a lot of angles. And as those angles get more angular, things start to get a little bit more complex. So I'm gonna keep it simple and just kind of be an artist, which I'm not. So this should go well. Let's burn! We're starting to make some headway. I've been at it for about two hours, getting the feet and these cross members on. I cut a few parts wrong, and so I had to make some adjustments. But that's one of the things I love about welding is because it's additive, I cut something short, and like you can see, I cut this piece too short. I just added it back on, I re-welded it, and now I'm able to use it in place where I want it. Um, I, cut the <laughs> I cut this piece too short as well. It was supposed to come back to here and was able to move it out. And the drawing said one thing. I always take way too much artistic interpretation with Chris's drawings and it's taken me a little longer than I anticipated, but I think it's looking and sick. Excuse and don't excuse my cussing because this thing's rad and I'm jealous that Joe gets it and I don't. All right, good people. This thing is looking phenomenal. 
clearest of all the pours I think I've ever done. There's zero, you can't, I guarantee you can't find a micro bubble on the edge here. They are just looking so damn good. So all we gotta do next, get this sucker demolded. We're gonna let it rest for a day and then we are going to flatten it and fill all of the cracks and voids, get it polished up, looking mint for the tabletop. But I gotta get back to welding so the boys are gonna handle that. Peace. And after about uh, three whole days of work, because I had to TIG this sucker, she is done. I mean, I don't know about you, but that looks cool as hell. Glad I knocked that over. Now, we need to go ahead and, because we have this built, we can fit the understructure for the cabinets, the keyboard holder, the top, the shelves, and all the good stuff. So, let's get to it. I'm gonna poop myself. I'm gonna do this while recording, so. It'll be impressive. We're gonna get it, Chris. No, no, put the camera down. Here we go, oh look. God. Come on. Yeah, let me stop. First thing I wanna do is we're, we're doing some decorative paneling. So I'm gonna cut down some MDF for that. And then we're gonna fit it to the sides over there. This should look pretty cool. So if you were wondering why we have this clamped down to the table, sometimes when you're dealing with very cold and very hot fluctuations in epoxy, you'll get cupping on the table. In my experience, clamping it down to a flat surface can bring the cup out. We don't have enough room to mill the bottom and uh, not get rid of the color. So we are at the mercy of trying to pull that thing back down the flat. So to fix it, I've just been turning the heater on and letting it sit. Hopefully it works. If not, you're fired. No, me. You know, I just... All I did was fill. Okay, so what I'm trying to do here, I can now easily trace these panels and then I'll be able to make them perfect. And then Chris has a pretty cool grid we're gonna put on them on the CNC. So we are ready for the cabinetry part of what's going on here. We still need to build square boxes. I'm gonna rip down some plywood and kind of start fitting and notching stuff in here. I think that's the best, best way to go for the next steps. Let's make some sawdust. So we need a panel on the top and Oh, I fudged this up already. Did I? Did I? I'm so effed up right now. My brain is just not functioning well. <sighs> I just wasted pretty much a whole sheet of plywood, like a jackass. <laughs> I need to start notching parts. So this is gonna be our top piece. We're gonna make a little notch here so it fits over our uh, overhang on our frame. And so I'm gonna notch that on both sides. I have been working my butt off to put out more and better videos for you guys. And you can definitely tell my brain's fried. Theory, it fits on top. It should fit underneath. That's probably pretty tight. Good. We'll let this sit overnight and clamp. As you can see, almost zero cupping on that sucker now, which means we can flatten this on the CNC now. The concern was that bottom isn't very thick, so we couldn't have it being cupped because we couldn't remove any material from the bottom. So we had to try and get that cup out. This is something that happens more often than I would like it to with epoxy. I don't know if it's because of the heat in my shop or I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. This technique to fix it has worked for us in the past. So we'll get this on the CNC. Now that the bottom's pretty much dead flat, the top surface, get the bottom surface. Chris will get it looking mint. We'll get this sanded, get it rocking and rolling. So as I mentioned, I made a mistake yesterday, so I, so I just stopped. Um, I told Joe, I was like, I am tired. Part of the territory when you have kids. So I made some lines on here and some notes to myself where we're just gonna create some relief. This doesn't need to be like butthole tight inside of there. What I'm gonna do is actually cut this edge here. We're putting solid wood edge banding on everything. And in order to do that, I need to give myself that relief in the front to have that edge banding as well as have our drawers sit properly. And then I'll make another mark and we're gonna cut this thing to size. It should fit almost perfect on the next round. So something I'm gonna try to do over here is like match profile on the edge. I just think it would look cool. And then when Joe pulls the drawer out, there'll be a little bit of a cubby here. He can put pencils, hidden treasure. I wanted the drawer front to come the whole way to the edge. So for my sake, we needed to have this piece all the way to the edge here and look clean and finish. Pretty good, huh? We need a place to mount our drawer slides to. So we're gonna have a 12 inch drawer and then this will mount here. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Be able, this will be open. We're gonna have to figure out how that's gonna kind of lay out there. Um, but we want to put all of the solid front edge banding on first. It'll be a lot easier than trying to put it on after. Um, and it'll look a lot cleaner, at least in my experience. 
So we just gotta get all the parts done and then we'll mark what's getting edge banded. The wood and put it on the other wood. We're gonna put the edge banding on here. We got a fast drying glue. Should help speed up this process. That, a little bit of blue tape and we should be able to get this thing assembled really fast after we get that on. It's so thick. All right, we are off of the CNC. This is looking sweet. Unfortunately, we opened up a lot of like spots and it's still pretty good. I mean, it is a soft wood, but there's some stuff that's like flaking off and I really don't want that. So we're gonna hit it with another seal coat. Same way we kind of did it before we put it in the resin to avoid any of the bubbles. We're gonna do that same thing again with the penetrating epoxy, harden this stuff up. What's another day? Happy trees, as Bob Ross would say. Those are happy little trees. We have the frame all primed, our panel is glued up for the back panel of the desk. So our next step is gonna to be to remove the tape off of this hardwood edge banding we put on there, use a flush trim bit and our quarter inch router, get these all cut down and then assemble our cabinet boxes. So this has like a very John Malecki style assembly process, which means it makes absolutely no fucking sense to a normal person with a real brain, but it makes sense to me. That's what matters. So. I'm gonna put the sides on and then we'll come back and start putting interior parts in. So, I'm a jackass and I cut this wrong over here. So instead of having a gap, we're simply gonna just put this front part on. These have absolutely no structural support, but Joe and I were talking and it would be nice to have somewhere in the back of the cabinet behind everything going on for him to um, potentially put like some of these things that need plugged in but don't necessarily need like daily attention. That is what I'm doing here. I'm gonna pin these in. Hey, here's your drawers, bud. What do you think? I like it. I've got a feeling it's just gonna be a tiny figurine right there. I'm gonna be honest, like you guys are going to Going crazy. I mean, like, I put some legs on it. I probably would have been fine with this in the day. <laughs> He'd have been good with just a plywood box. I mean, <laughs> better than what you got, which is a plywood box. This is better than most people's desks. Blame Chris. When it was designed, he was in a very minimalist stage in his life. Why don't you need storage? I don't need anything. All right, so now I've got the programs for cutting the back panel, the side panels uh, loaded up on the computer for the CNC, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut those, and yeah, you'll see those in a little bit. This self-etching primer is all dry on the frame, so the next step, we're gonna be painting this. We're using a direct metal paint from uh, Sherwin-Williams. I'm gonna spray this out of my HTE gun and uh, see how she comes out. We need to fill more holes, so we're gonna pour black resin in it, which seems to be par for the course for all tables. Black resin for life. Just gonna keep pumping, keep mixing, keep pouring, keep drying, keep sanding, keep milling, keep pouring. It never ends. All for me. All for Joe. I might as well just sleep in this epoxy. All right, we are dry and all the voids are filled. Chris is working on sanding the panels, getting those ready for primer and paint. Sam's finishing up painting the frame with our direct to metal paint. I'm gonna get working on getting all of this epoxy off of the top. We'll get this thing through the wide belt sander, get it polished up looking stunning, and then sprayed with finish. We should have a tabletop by the end of the day. I am stoked. Now we're into the fun part. We're gonna cut this sucker to size. We gotta cut some ears so it fits on the top of the desk because of the way it's shaped. So I'm gonna do a little sizing with the track saw, a little bit of finesse, and get this thing mocked up on there before we go into any final sanding. Oh. Almost had it. I didn't like that corner anyway. Me neither. One of these days, John's gonna pull something off and nurse him back to health. <laughs> So in order to get the top to fit, we're making a template here because if you look, we're gonna have to create some ears and for the table to more or less sit because of the way that we designed it. Originally, we were gonna have you know this kind of exposed. I think I wanna put the ear in. I can always remove the ear if it looks bad. You, you, don't, you don't like it? No, I like it, but it's just, why your ear? But I can't add it back on. So Sam's cutting a template out of some hardboard that should allow us to get this thing fitting perfect so we can only have to make one cut on the table itself that our template is fitting, I'm gonna fit it to our table. Now, something of interest, we've got this angle right here. I'm gonna try to match it. Don't know why, but I feel like I should. So, here we go. Pretty darn close. Perfect, almost. 
While John's working on the tabletop, I got some maple milled down and I put a couple, uh, I put some dados in the bottom for our drawers. Um, we're gonna start cutting things to size and assembling them and hopefully we should have two drawers in a little bit here. So now what matters is the straight line for the rest of the template. We can't go over the line at the top. So it's not gonna come the whole way. The saw blade will come like this. And so we, if we go past and try to cut to that line, that's what we might hit into this. It'll just be a thing. So what I'll do is I'll just transfer the point here to here and I'll finish the cut by hand. The other problem we have right now is the track's got to be, it's right-handed track. I'll start out by scoring it. And then what I'll do is I'll actually plunge this in and cut and then I'll find where that plunge is and I'll just make sure I'm keeping an eye on the back of that blade. See how the back there? I don't want that coming past that line. Nitty gritty down to the precision parts here. This wood's pretty soft, so I can come the whole way straight to this line. Souvenir? See if she fits. Pretty good? Pretty good! All right! <laughs> Hell yeah! I, for, for some reason, I thought it would be like more climactic, setting it in, and our emotionless uh, shrill over here didn't even give me a look. I was like, is it in? That looks rad. We could put filler pieces in. Oh, that would be sick. Oh, well, yeah, because you get do another angle there and there. Because they would just have to live there. Yeah, you're sitting forever. What's beautiful is now we can get on to final finishes and final assembly. Let's go. So I'm going to cut uh, these cutoff parts to kind of fit the gaps on the outside. It's a little bit of a happy accident. I wasn't anticipating doing this, but it's easy enough. Just setting the angles on the miter here and making the cuts. Looks good. That's it? No, it looks great. What the f***? Dude, that's it? I have more of a response. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, f you. I'm taking lunch. Golly. <laughs> All right. So we've got about a million cracks and voids to fill here. I'm using this UV epoxy from Total Boat. I'm just going around. I'm going to put it in all the little holes I can find. I'm going to take this owl. I'm going to poke all the air out of it that I can. A lot of guys like to use CA glue here. I prefer this stuff because I trust epoxy more than I trust CA glue. And it's not as brittle. And then this stuff's been working awesome for us. I'll have a link down below if you're interested in it. And also, if you want to know any tips, tricks, or techniques on how to build tables like this, I've got my entire masterclass coming out in the next few weeks. You're going to want to sign up for the wait list because it'll be the cheapest price that I will ever have it at on that wait list. If you want to wait, that's fine. But if you want to get on the first round early bird and get the best pricing possible, that's going to be it. I'm doing full multiple hour long deep, to deep tutorials on how to build a table like this. We'll do glass river tables. We'll do solid live edge tables. Everything that I know about building live edge furniture is coming to you in one single masterclass. So get on that wait list if you want to build these for yourself and you want more details. So we've kind of changed the design for the drawers that go underneath your desk. We've got now just two side drawers and then we'll have a center drawer. John had mentioned to me that you were wanting kind of recesses and holes and pockets for like different things you're gonna store in there. Kind of like, yeah, like a, a, like a cutout, right? Like we were talking about like something that's like a holder. So <laughs> headphones, keyboard, SD cards, mouse. Maybe like one or two of these. I don't have anything else too crazy. I mean, that's pretty much the basics of it. Otherwise we have like batteries. We were thinking like this stuff. I don't know if that's wide enough, too wide. I mean, if, if we can cut it, it should be fine. Organization tray for Joe's middle drawer at his desk. So he wanted spots to put all this stuff. Mouse, headphones, I think this is his phone, AirPods, SSD, knife, SD card reader holders, trackpad and keyboard. So let's go test fit everything, make sure it fits. Bam. Look at that, look at that. It's time to get dirty. We're looking really good. Ridiculously good looking. We're wet sanded up to 3000 grit. Now the part to bring it home is the polish. We're gonna be using 3M's three-part polishing kit. We've gotten really good results with it. I'm stoked. I don't think I've ever built something this good. It looks pretty damn amazing. So we're gonna get this thing polished and we're gonna get our finish coat on top of the, all the wood. Oh, 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 pretty crazy, huh? It's like crystal clear too, you know what I mean? All right, we are ready to put some final finish on this thing. What we'll do, four coats of lacquer, we'll completely do it, and then I will let that dry, and then I will buff one more time the river before final reveal. So let's go. Uh, we're in the final stage. 
ready to spray, and I don't know if this blue we chose is, looks good with this. And by that I mean I, I don't think the blue we chose <laughs> looks good with this. Well, I don't think anything can, like matching it, you know what I mean? Like blue, the opposite, what looks good with blue is orange. It's on the opposite end of the color wheel. You don't want orange, do you? Orange might look sick. I just feel like it would like steal the show though, right? Like... That's why if you don't do that, it gotta be like a slight dark gray, like dark, cause that's not working. I guess you're gonna have to see in the reveal. Let us spray. Straight up orange. I almost feel like that might look better with the blue. Bag secured. I like it. That'll pull a little bit of the darker hues and stuff in here. That'll look good. All right, let's glue up the shelf. We'll get a couple more coats on there, and then you guys are going to refinish those panels, huh? All right, this thing is looking sick. The wood looks amazing. Love the black infill. Last thing left to do. I'm gonna polish up the resin, get that sparkling before we get this thing assembled. The polishing is complete, and I gotta say, this is the best epoxy table I've ever made. I'm just gonna put it out there. Let me know what you think. A lot of you guys have seen all my other stuff. I think this takes the cake. Crystal clear resin, multi-pour, not a single bubble inside. I love it. Now all we gotta do is assemble the rest of this damn desk. <laughs> We're gonna magnetize these panels to the desk. That way we can one, change them out. Two, it'll give a nice clean look. Three, because I want to. We'll CA glue those in and then these things will go straight up and then it's on to the back panel, baby. Moment of truth. And just like magic. Gotta love it when a plan comes together. That orange looks good. Whose idea was that? Mine. Oh, might have to hire you. Just kidding, it was yours, John. Really? I thought it was yours. Hell yeah. Alrighty, we are on to the final stages. You keep using the horn. I don't think it means what you think it means. Chris is gonna give us a hand real quick and Sam and I are gonna get the uh, the bottom, the drawers installed. Chris actually went ahead and CNC'd like a mount for all the LED lights that are gonna go under the table. We'll get all that stuff done. Back panel, side panel, top shelf, leveled installed and while we do that joe is going to paint his office <laughs> because there's a little bit of mud on smudge on the walls but next up is fitting let's do our best here gentlemen let's go well, let's say we're going to leave the clamps on there for aesthetics we want to have like a workshop working in working out of the shop kind of a i'm kidding <laughs> ah it's so close I mean, it looks sick. All right, we're in the final stages of getting this thing together and we're getting the LEDs installed and then like turn it up. You can see these bars inside of it and it's not giving us as much like, I don't know, what's the word with diffused light that, we're, that, we, that we want to see. So we're gonna take the top off and I think we've got another idea on, on how we can make this work. All right, so you can see here what Chris did. He cut a, a rudimentary kind of shapes on the CNC that will outline the floating islands on our resin. We're gonna give this a shot now, kind of see how that looks. She is done and she is ready to go to her home. So we just got it in the room and I gotta say, it's looking good, except I hate the drawer fronts. I gotta run to an appointment. So I'm gonna leave Sam and Chris to fix it. Then we'll show you guys the B-roll finish. And as expected, the boys came through. I definitely think that these look better. They blend in a little bit more and that's kind of what we wanted. I'm loving this thing. I think Joe's loving it. What do you guys think is the coolest part about this build? For me, bar none, the tabletop. He's super jealous. So you guys gotta let me know. Should we build Chris one? 